Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to episode 73 of the Mo Show podcast. Dana, thank you. Am I pronouncing it right? Is yes, it Dana? Dana, Dana. But it's with an E-H at the end. Yes, Dana. Dana. Khaliji, Dana. Khaliji. Eh, Dana. Not Dana. Dana. <laughs> <laughs> like the Americans also say Dana, don't they? Don't Dana, they? Dana, Dana. But uh, my dad specifically said it's Dana. Dana. Mm. Well, welcome to Jeddah. You're from the Eastern Province. Yeah. Which city in the Eastern Province? I'm from Dharan. From Dharan. Mm-hmm. It's where the oil capital yeah. of the world we're, is. We're pumping it out. HQ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were born in um, in Eastern and you grew up there. You were raised there. Everything about you is Eastern Province related. Everything. What was that experience like? Wallahi, yeah, not even. First of all, thank you for having me. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. A little nervous. I think we'll get through this. Uh, it's yeah. nice being in Jeddah. It's different being in, it's interesting being in a place that looks so familiar, yet it's not familiar. Because I'm not that familiar with Jeddah. I get that too when I go to your part of the country. Yeah. So it's strange, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm very much from a Sharqiya girl. Mm-hmm. Born and raised, my family, we're all from there. Uh Lived in Dharan my whole life. Best in Dharan, my childhood was all specifically in Aramco, within the Aramco grounds, on camp, we call it. And yeah, that was my, and my family actually still lived there, my parents' houses, within within the, within the gates. The camp, yeah. yeah, within the gates, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was, that was our life. Uh, it was a very, yani, for me, it was normal. But now as I'm older and I hear people, yeah, you, yeah, you're Ramco kids, you're Ramco kids. You're like, and then sometimes you sit down and you think about, yeah, it was really, really special. Mm-hmm. We had a really special childhood. It was very special. It was, it was something out of TV. We'd go out in the morning, come back at night, you know, running the streets, in the pool all summer. Parades, Girl Scouts, uh, you name it, Yanni, because it was... It was very American eccentric at the time, also, and I went to the schools there as a kid. So uh, yeah, that 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 was our life. That was our life, and it was just it was life within the gates and life outside of the gates. Alhamdulillah, I was exposed to both. That's uh, life within the gates, within camp, really, really gave us a really extraordinary life. I mean, I think it was yeah, he emulated off of some town in the U.S. or something. But uh, even the U.S. wasn't like that, I think, even at that time. It looked so, like a U.S. neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, it looks exactly like a U.S. neighborhood. Yeah, and the minute you cross the gate, everything is different. It mm-hmm. looks like a U.S. neighborhood. Stop signs and all? Stop signs, uh, crosswalks, a woman with these orange vests crossing, helping us cross the street to school. We used to ride our bikes to school. Um, we were out all day, knock on friends' houses. When someone moves in next door, you can knock on their house. Can so-and-so come out to play? So yeah, it was really, really, it was extraordinary, and I appreciate it more and more as life carries on. Obviously, I mean, I'm speaking of it this this way very fondly, and obviously, maybe people that were older than me were saying, "Oh, it was nicer before," and I said it was nicer before. Has it changed? Changed a lot. Changed yeah, a lot. changed a lot. Changed a lot. It, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, when we lived there, the and I'm not saying this is a good thing or a bad thing, but see, I mean, the amount of Saudi families that were living within the, that community, and a lot of Saudis worked for Aramco, but within the community, we're, I mean, we knew them all. And uh, we still have these friendships till today. As family friends, as friends' friends. So it was a really, really unique experience and uh, that formed a bond and even like the expat friends that I have, we still have this certain bond because we all came from a place that was really, really unique and we lived a really, really unique life. And to be, yeah, and, and for me to experience this in the middle of Sardia, you know, because as an expat, you stay there all year and then you go off in the summer and you come back. So life was within a gate. Yeah. And alhamdulillah, yeah, and we were always within our gates, but on the weekends, we go downtown, we see our aunts and uncles and whatever. So we had the best of both worlds, I would say. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was very privileged in that sense. I wouldn't say privileged, yeah, any privilege in the sense of just the exposure, the friends we got to make, 
the lifestyle, the freedom we had. It was really, really exceptional. And uh, yeah, and and it's it's me to my core. It, يعني, when you're in a Ramco kid, especially from that era, it really is something that's in you to your core. Your beliefs, your lifestyle, how you look at life, really, really had an effect. Uh, definitely, yeah. it's it's yeah. it's it, 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 it almost like it molds you into uh, something that people who lived outside of camp would not be molded into. Yeah, it was completely different. And when again, for me, it was totally normal. But I was just with a friend of mine the other day, and we we're talking about something. She goes, "Yeah, I didn't to yell around Kogir." And I'm like, "What do you mean?" So it's it seems that there was some. There was the in and the out. When, and back then, ما كان في شيء. Nothing. Uh, so idea back then. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we got exposed to that I guess was just different from, let's say, outside the gates. Mm. Uh, Two of my very good friends mm. grew up in in mm. that uh, environment, mm-hmm. the Al Ali boys, if you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, Maj and Salman, I remember very well. They lived down the road. From in mm. on, on in camp. Huh? Yeah. And when he talks about his childhood, mm. his face lights up. Yeah, 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 yeah. They actually used to look forward to leaving school in the States mm. so that they can come back to Saudi Sah. because that's they really where Houston life for was. A while. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. where home is. You know? home. Uh, and we're really nostalgic about it. We love it, streets, everything. We just, we love being home. It's so funny. The discovery mm. of oil created mm. a community with many nationalities. And because of that, it shaped and cultivated people's mm. lives in a way that it probably wouldn't have if there wasn't the discovery of oil. Like it brought people together, this whole uh, okay. I'm speaking, we're in the camp and we're, with, but it had a huge influence in the, in the, in the whole يعني, region, Eastern province, mm-hmm. in the whole province. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of, there's just a kind of, because pe- many people work there. So even as a company and as a corporation, like the ethics and the rules and the mission and the goals of the company, people would take that home. So it, it, it is, it did, had a huge impact. Yeah. The discovery of oil, therefore Aramco, therefore mm-hmm. the whole community created. So yeah. Amazing. Mm. Today you are a fashion designer by trade. I am. Would you classify yourself as that? Yes. Actually, I don't even like to say I have, I play two roles because we're many things. I'm a fashion designer. I have a corporate life. I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a friend. And, uh, but if we're going to talk about career, yes, I'm a fashion designer who also happens to work in the corporate world as well. It's an interesting combo. It is. Yeah. Um, that's my choice. Do you carry things over from mm. like the corporate world that helps you in fashion and vice versa? Definitely. Because I started fashion a bit later on. I was already really well like, I mean, entrenched in my career at the time. And uh, and because I work in IT, so there's a lot of like input, output, analytical thinking, how I'm going to create something, how the outcome is, thought process, how we're going to do it, how we sketch it out, then dry runs, prototyping. And at the end, there's an end result. So that I apply that actually in my fashion and development uh, of the collection. And I wouldn't say it's conscious, it's just a, it's organic, it's a subconscious thing that happens. So there's always like something that goes in and a result. And uh, so I started off, I was, I was actually programming at the beginning. And then just my IT life kind of evolved. And then there was something in me that wanted to change. You know, what, what can I do? What can I do? And, and I was working in Aramco, actually. And th- as you do. And you live in Aramco. It's, it, you know, it's, but it's really interesting because no one ever said you have to. No one ever made. You choose, it's just, you chose it, to. It just happens. I mean, even days now I'm thinking, like, why did I choose that? But it just, it just was the natural progression. Is it the familiar, the comfort? I think so. Halas, you know, it's where your parents worked, is where you live. You and, graduate. And it's a good, it's a good familiar and a good comfort. It's a lot. Of course, it is. Yeah. You know, and 
No, it is. The familiarity of it, it's, ju- it's just the obvious choice. And even I think there was a time where it was one of the best places to work. Obviously now, the opportunities are endless. endless. Especially as a woman also, of course. So it was a place where you can kind of choose what you want to study. If you want to be an engineer, you're going to be an engineer. If you're going to be a chemical engineer, if you're going to be in computer science, you're going to be a developer. That's the place to be. Um, you just made me realize how many eras this company passed through. Oh. I'm thinking established in 1960. La way. I'm going to take a guess. Am no, I no, so wrong? No, you're so wrong. Sorry. Oof, no, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, you yeah, better yeah. tell me yeah, when I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. La, no. <laughs> um, Aramco when? establishment. You're thinking pre-1960, huh? Of course. Oh, my God. Yeah, I my need grandfather, to walk off this set. Yeah, my grandfather worked for Amco. 1933. Yeah, my grandfather worked in Treasury. He's 90 yeah, yeah, yeah. years old next year. Oh, night shift. That was off. 90 next and I get year. 80. And I get 80. 33? Mm-hmm. 1933. Saudi yeah. Aramco traces its beginnings in 19, 1933 mm. with a concession agreement that was signed between Saudi Arabia and Standard Oil Company yeah. of California, California, SoCal. Yeah, SoCal. Wow. Mm-hmm. Now, do you see why... Asked me before we started shooting, mm-hmm. you're like, Mo, what gave you this idea? And, I, and mm-hmm. I told you what gave me the idea. But what's keeping me going? Mm-hmm. A, it's the people that I get to meet. Mm-hmm. I'm so fortunate. Mm-hmm. And B, the things I'm learning, learning. on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... We're, we're, look, we're all learning from each other. It's, it's so interesting. You just meet one person. I was telling you when we came. Yesterday I was at an event. I saw something I've never seen before. I know my life in Saudi. I felt like a tourist. So it's, uh, yeah. The wedding. The wedding, yeah. The, the, yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. Okay. You crazy. were going. Anyway, I, go I, I, I tend okay, to do this. Yeah, yeah, I, go I ahead, interject. Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, go ahead. Hey. You, were, you were telling me how, mm. yes, you, you, you somehow keep mm. getting, I don't want to say sucked in because it's a bit mm. negative, but mm. pulled into mm. the Aramco world. Yeah, you... yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, look, I left Aramco after working there for a while. And at the time I left, it was kind of unheard of. It was like, you want to leave? And do, I was like, do you really want to go out there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you really want to go out there? Things are different out there and, and you won't have a card to get in the gates and all that. You know what I mean? And these are things we're, we're, you know, we're it was like ingrained in us. Yeah. And, uh, but the good thing is when I did leave, but I never really left because my, family's still there it's still home but when i left it in terms of a job mm-hmm. uh yeah there's a whole other world out there so i was like new to the world in a certain extent especially in the corporate world because there exactly what where we have to do it's it's it's, it's a well-oiled machine it's just pushing no pun no pun intended, pun intended. yeah <laughs> didn't so, <laughs> so when you started your mm-hmm. fashion mm-hmm. label mm-hmm uh, what kind of materials? What were you selling? What were your products? The way I got into this was interesting because, again, I was in IT. Uh, I was programming, doing things. And then I was like, okay, I need to change. What should I do? And then I went, I did my master's. And I was like, okay, I'll stick to IT, but I'll do something a little more interesting. So I went to like interactive media, which has to do with like IT and media. And then I came back and, as you said, I... I left Aramco, I joined a media company. And then maybe five years in, I was like, okay, there's something in me. There's a creative that needs to come out. And and you start thinking, now what? Is this going to be it forever? But what about me? What do I want to do? What do I feel? And at first it started off with me, like kind of trying to discover new brands and saying, okay, I'm going to start a boutique. I'm going to open a boutique and... I used to love researching these things. I went to a few trade fairs. And then I was like, what? No. Uh, and I started taking courses throughout the summer. I did a few when I was doing my master's in the UK also, just out of interest. And then I was like, yeah, dedicated. I was like, okay, I'm going to take some co- courses, just see how this would work out. And then there was this, uh, there was a competition in Dubai for some a store called Sauce. I know Sauce. So. Sauce, yeah. yeah. And uh, and my friend gave me, she's like, why don't you try this out? I know nothing. I've never done anything like this. And I made three dresses. Okay. I was, uh, yeah, and I didn't win, but I was in the like top five. And I was like, okay, this could be something. And I was like painting and cutting. 
But then it was just still, it didn't formulate to something, but it's it's just that bit of like, what? Glimmer. Glimmer. Yeah. You know? And we all get that sometimes. Like, I can't do that. And then something just happens and you're like, maybe I can. So I was like, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me give this a shot. What do I like? What do I know? I like t-shirts. I like jersey. I didn't want to get too complicated because I was learning a whole new business. It's like, okay, I'll stick to something basic. We'll, we'll, we'll use one kind of fabric. We'll try to be creative with these fabrics. And uh, yeah, and I started, like my first collection was uh, was made out of jersey. And I was just trying to like kind of structure it in a different way. Oversized t-shirts, but we'd pad it and we'd, we'd fuse it and we'd, we'd do different things with it. Uh, it was fun. It was interesting at the time. I learned a lot. I realized how much I didn't know what I was doing because the, the, the design part is the easiest part. But the whole, everything that goes around with it is, uh, is uh, something you need to learn. The production part? Production, sourcing, sizing. production. Yeah, and you had the sizing and these bad. It's different because based on where you are. And, based, and that's why I went oversized at the beginning. I was kind of playing it safe. But it's just dealing with production production, importing, exporting, uh, finding workshops that will do quantities is small enough. Yeah. China, Taiwan? Uh, no, I was big enough to do China and Taiwan. So not of course not. La, la. So China, where you China and Taiwan, you need minimum they won't even look at you. you I mean, maybe minimum. now they will. I mean, post-COVID actually, it's been a lot different yeah. as before that. So no, at that time, you look for like niche workshops. And uh, I found one in London that I started working with. And he was actually great because... I learned a lot from him, the guy that owned the workshop. But unfortunately, because, as you said, China and Taiwan, all these workshops started closing mm-hmm. one after the other. So I worked with one. He closed down. Then I worked with another. And then I met. And they would always like, and then you kind of get to this network. And then they forwarded me to someone that I worked with for a while. She was great. And then also for her, it was a, it became not lucrative for her because to to do such good work at a small quantity. So so she went to custom made. And then at that point, I was like, okay, I need to find a solution. And that's when I shifted to Turkey, where it was easier to mm-hmm. find small workshops. Yeah, big, big clothing manufacturing Big clothing manufacturing, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a tough one, though. It's a tough one. It's yeah, it's a tough one. But I did find uh, one workshop, and then I found another. Alhamdulillah, they all became friends. We still in touch, and... Uh, and so that was another phase. And again, it's all learning. I learned so much being exposed to these different workshops, how the industry is working, what's happening, uh, just seeing how things are produced. Uh, I always made it a point to work with smaller workshops. And it wasn't only because when they like China and India and all that, I'm like, okay, it's great. First of all, I don't have the capacity. But I did like working in these like mom and pop shops, I would say, that, that I had a personal relationship yeah. with the person I'm working with. Like boutiques. Boutiques, and you actually, and then you see the woman that's sewing the buttons and her son's graduating. It must you know, be easier you know, to work with. Yeah, them. it's easy to work with, and it's very personal. They, they're, they're so happy for your success. You're so happy to give them work. So it, it was just, it was just overall a really pleasant experience. Um, and then it just so happened, Turkey was, yeah, يعني, not as accessible for a period of time. Had things going on there, so I was like, okay. What's going to happen? I couldn't travel as much uh, there. So then it just kind of came to me again, that glimmer. What if I just open my own atelier? I have I have enough experience now. I learned from I learned from courses. I learned as I went along. I learned from different workshops in different countries. I think I can I can I could take this on this responsibility. And uh, that's when I opened up on my own in, in Dubai. Mm hmm. Now, are you online or brick and mortar? I prefer to be online. We're moving, trying to be yeah, I need purely online. But we're still, we still work with some boutiques, not as much as before. Um, but yeah, it's online on our own or online through other online platforms. So that's where I am right now. It, I mean, it is, if you're not online, are mm. you out of the game these days? Allah, it's it's a different world you have from, to be from when it. I started. I think you have to be on it. But online can mean anything. Like in Saudi, well, it can't mean anything. Online means online. But in Saudi, but then in, 
WhatsApp is huge. <laughs> People shop through WhatsApp. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. For me, not so much for what for my product, but I'm just saying that that that's that's a a, a channel. It's Instagram a channel. too. Instagram has shop yeah. now. Yeah, Instagram shop. But I know what you mean by WhatsApp. But yeah, like, WhatsApp. Like, yeah, life happens through WhatsApp. Life happens through WhatsApp. I barely get any emails today because what used to be an email. Is no, now no, WhatsApp email is for old people now. Emails purely corporate. <laughs> Nobody, yeah, nobody sends. Yes, nobody sends emails. It's either spam or like serious stuff. Yeah, that's it. dear Donna, trust you are well. Yeah, that's, that's uh, it. Hey, that's it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, no, you need to be online. You need to be online. Also, business wise, being online. And and look, it's not as easy as people think. Just open up a website and put some products. It's it's huge. The marketing behind it is massive. The budget you need to have is huge. Best again, if it works, it's direct. Your world is, direct. is your market. Yeah, yeah, the world is your Global. market. Global, you're, there's no middleman, as we were talking about mm. earlier. And uh, yeah. yeah, you have to pay more people maybe, but yeah. It must be really damaging to the high street with all these brands flocking online. Yeah. I don't know if it's damaging, but it's changed It's changed the whole vibe. The definitely. real estate market definitely yeah, yeah. has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going through some adjustments. Yeah, yeah, that is changing. Even people, big shops came smaller. smaller. So even to that extent, a lot of em- vacancies when I when I walk down London, yeah, <laughs> uh, streets in London, mm-hmm. like I see a lot of a lot of vacancies. Yeah, because people shifted. Yeah, people shifted to online. It's kind of sad because that experience of let's go I shopping. Agree. I agree. Let's go shopping is it, it doesn't exist as much anymore. But it did save us a lot, also mm-hmm. yeah, and the time and all that. It's and, still there. I mean, Oxford Street. Yeah, it's still there. Buzzing. Hey, but you don't, yeah, and if you don't have to go, you won't go. Before it used to be a day. I'm gonna go shopping to that. I don't know. It's it's weird because you need to be online, but then I say I do miss it. I do miss the pre-online days. Even ironically, when I started my brand, there was no Instagram. Yeah, any like Facebook. That's uh there was no Instagram. Online was obviously big, but it's not like huge as it is now. Um, I think even some big brands were reluctant to go online at the beginning because it made them look a little too yeah. commercial, I mm-hmm. think. I don't know. Um, but there was a personal touch to it. Like when someone was interested in your item, they would come look at it. You would meet them. They would see how it fits in their store. Now, because there's so much out there digitally, so much excess, no one's like, next, next. Yeah, I, did, I didn't mean to do that. Next. Okay, yeah. that implies, yeah. So would you say it's mm. easier for brand X to go out and, and be the best brand they can be today mm-hmm. or in 1990? Now, I ask that because mm-hmm. today, you, would, you know, anyone would say, of course, today, because social media and all that. Mm-hmm. But there's so much more competition. <laughs> Which era would you, let's let me say, which era do you, do you prefer and which era would it have been in the favor of the brand more in terms of challenges and resistance? I don't know which era, but it's definitely not this era. Not this era. Not this, this era. This is the one of the more harder yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, this is a harder one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's just so much out there. So much. You as a consumer. Mm-hmm. Who the real winner is? Mm-hmm. Delivery companies. <laughs> During COVID, it's the only, it's the, during COVID, it was the only business that didn't stop. The deliveries, mm-hmm. the Aramexes, the mm-hmm. FedExes, the, the DHLs yeah, of yeah, the world. Yeah. I'd like to see a chart on how their business mm-hmm. has elevated in the last decade. No, because I remember when we were on lockdown, I had to move everything to the house mm-hmm. because they were still picking up. They're still picking up orders. No one was out, no one was in the street. All you see is DHL going back. And it changed people's behavior for good. Mm. Yes, alhamdulillah, COVID, Mm. pretty much done, inshallah. Mm. But it changed, I've changed characteristics of myself because of COVID. Did you? Yeah. We we order in a lot more than we used to. Ah, okay, in that sense, yeah. Because people were saying there's going to be a new normal, new normal, new normal. normal. But then I see a lot of things just kind of went back to as they were but i think subconsciously maybe you're right yeah um yeah i mean everything we were, went e yeah we were introduced to things 
Yeah, there's things I never even knew that could be delivered. That probably existed before. Yeah. Thema Pharmacy, all this, but we just didn't. Yeah. We didn't have the it's need. Taken off. I don't know if it's still functioning now, but the government e applications where you can, you'd have to book to go to Mecca, Umrah, mm -hmm. or even just a visit to the mm -hmm. mosque. You'd have to go on the app, book your session, mm -hmm. book your time. Mm -hmm. And then you get a barcode that when you get to the door, the mm -hmm. guy looks at it or scans it. I heard that was going to stay. I'm not sure if it Well, the barcode is here to stay because it seems. Mm -hmm. I mean, yesterday I went to a wedding with a barcode. Yeah, me too. I saw oh, you that. did? Okay. So. <laughs> I like the idea uh, yeah. of when you do go to Mecca, you need to take an appointment. It limits... End of the day, like, let's say it's it does a lot to combat fire hazards. So you, how many people are in there? Yay. Uh, so it computes that X amount of people can only mm. be there one more time. Mm. And if it's 500,000, if I'm mm. the 500,000th and mm. one, so we say, oh, choose another slot. Mm. So so I like, I don't know if that's still on right now. I, I don't know, but the electronic world, oh my the God. in general, mashallah, I mean, what happened in the past three years? So advanced. It's so advanced. Nothing like I've seen Love, most thing that I loved, mm. I can get a passport sent to my house. Exactly. New passport. Imagine. Or ahwal. That used to be a very, that used to be an, an, an experience and an effort yeah. to go mm -hmm. and stand in line. Mm -hmm. And you're going to like old part of town yeah. in Jidda, at least Balad. Mm -hmm. And you're there for, it's a three, it was a three hour job yeah. to do that. You'd have to look. And now I'm clicking a few, boom, mm -hmm. pay my 50 bucks or whatever. It. And it's and it comes sent. sent to your door, yeah. Hey, Lala, it's something else here. And my friend's trying to renew their passport in, in the U.S. I'm telling you. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. عجينة محضرة بشغل قوامها خفيف وهش وطعمها ولا أروع um, What's something that you see in, in the industry now away mm. from tech, but mm -hmm. like just something in the industry that you see that you would, would like to be changed for the better. So and it's now or, or something that you picked up on earlier in your career. Look, fashion is a interesting business in terms of people's perception of it. So it could be, it could come off as uh, silly, come off as uh, Silly, just not not so important. Uh, yeah, any a, a fluff, I would say, but it actually really is something that is important and part of our lives. And I just give this intro. Why? Because true, I think it's something very important. I think the way you dress, regardless of what it is, it it represents you. It's a way of you expressing yourself it's a way to make yourself feel better it's it it elevates your mood there's just so much more to it now on that on the counter side how much how much clothes do we need and that's the question that's always as 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 a designer you're kind of it's always something the abundance element the abundance the, the amount of things it's just there so what I would like to see change is I don't, you know, you don't want it to go away, but you want it to be done better. I feel everyone should do their share in, in doing things better, being more responsible, being more conscious. Uh, obviously, the, the word being sustainable right now is, is, is the word. It's, it's big on corporate social it's responsibility good. lists. Yeah, 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 yeah. But saying that you're a sustainable business from A to Z is very challenging. How do you define it? Well, I if I came to terms before, I wouldn't even like to mention it because I would think that if I would say that I'm a sustainable brand, that means I have to know the drop of water that went into this, this, this. And actually it's, it doesn't have to be that way. If, if certain elements of this whole production line is better. So it's about being better. Yeah. This is, it's about being more conscious. It's about being responsible. Uh, I would rather have more people buying less pieces for me, if that makes Got any it. sense. So when when they say, okay, do you want to get bigger? Do you want to go global? You want, you want yeah, because I want to have access to more people mm -hmm. that will that will buy, regardless from where. 
بس دو اي ونت كيب بامبينج 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 مور ستاف اوت نو سو ذاتس انا انا اي فيل ذات وود بي جريت اف ذاتس ان جنرال وير ذا وورلد از جوينج كواليتيتيف كواليتي طبعا اند اند ذير سو ماتش تو ات اف يو باي ا جود بيس And I'll add local, but it doesn't have to be local. A good piece, locally. You're doing so, rather than just going in one place and the same amount, just buying a whole bunch of crap that you're going to dump. Because people do say that sometimes. So, uh, I think it could go a lot further for everyone. Starting from, 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 entrepreneurship from the brand itself from the economy from sustainability but yeah so it's a full cycle people are a little more conscious of what they do it really it's it benefits everyone any big lessons that you've learned uh in your path to where, where you are today yeah yeah there's a lot of lessons First, yeah. tell me biz- business lessons. Business or lessons? Or industry-related lessons. Industry-related lessons or... In the end, it's a business. You need to know your numbers. You need to know where your money's going. You need to know how it's going to come back. So all these things, there's a lot of trial and error, a lot of money throughout the trial and error that, that's been wasted. So you always need to learn how to not repeat that, how to reduce the waste, mm. reduce those mistakes. Uh, you start to learn who to deal with and not deal with. You know what I mean? Because you need, you can even start understanding the tone of emails and what people have to offer you and what they don't have to offer you. So you learn a lot. You learn a lot. People always want to work people with people that are invested in you as much as you're going to invest in them. So so it, it's 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 from business wise, yeah, it's it's numbers, it's money, it's time, it's commitment, it's it's it's, it's sweat, it's sacrifice. Did you learn that on the job, the numbers, the accounting part to it all? Uh I'm 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 decent with numbers, yeah. I never had an issue with that and I'm quite organized in the way I I, I work, but yeah. Sometimes you create something and then by the time you add up the cost, you're like, there's no way I can sell this. Yeah. And you need to be logical about that. You can't just think, but it cost me this much because someone's going to be like, well, who cares? <laughs> yeah. The numbers need to add up. That's true. Yeah, numbers need to add up. It needs to make sense. You need to have kind of a, a, a target of where you want your price points to be and see how you work with it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm sure you get a, a lot of support from from females in the country. Mm. Is that something that really helps you keep going? The people. Uh, uh, طبعا. They did they and the look. It, it's a, again, it's a tough business, and anyone, bring any fashion designer that just kind of started or like smaller brands and whatever. But you come to these moments, you're like, oh man, I don't know if I can keep doing this. But then that glimmer we talked about. It just takes one woman. I have a client. I'm sorry, I'll give you an example. A client, a client that's, she's kind of on the bigger side. And she messaged me once and she's like, uh, can you make me something with my proportions? Okay, look, I don't, I don't, we don't do custom. And then, uh, and then one time we kind of had a slow pace. I was like, what? So I contacted her and I'm like, yeah, sure. Which dress did you like? And we did it for her. And the messages I got from her afterwards, how I made her feel, how special she felt, how, and and this kind of support that you get, it really, and then now she's, she's my regular client. We have this relationship, but it, it really, it, it, it keeps you going. You Some days you'd be like, oh, I'm, I can't do this anymore, whatever. And then someone would call you and say, look, We really saw his dress. We want to do this. So it's just these small things that come up here and there uh, that keeps you going. And uh, Or you're like you'll go somewhere. Best thing is when you see someone wearing one of your pieces and you have no idea who this person is or where they bought this piece. And it really, really gives uh, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. 
I can imagine. Mm. I can imagine because they don't know you, yeah. but they appreciate your work. Yeah, yeah. You spent money. Yeah. On my work, mm -hmm. and you decided to wear it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it really feels. Uh, so there's these little things, and what I no did notice about the fashion community here, where yeah, we didn't really have a community, but now we're kind of coming together because now we kind of more have a platform. There's certain things popping up here and there, events and all of that, that's just kind of brought uh, designers together to a certain extent. I mean, there's plenty out there, but let's just say it's just come made it closer. And uh, we're actually really supportive of each other. Amazing. Really supportive of each other. And I'm, I'm really proud to say that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it really is all about community. It really um, is. It really is. Trying to do things all on your own in life in general, yeah, is uh, Hell. is challenging. And and I'll say something that contradicts that, but in the end, when you when you're in your room, you close the door, you are alone. But so you need to know how to live with yourself alone. But uh, but a community is really important. Collaboration is so important. Being open and helping people out within the field, you really really learn a lot from them they learn a lot from you and just kind of and you realize how much you do sometimes by being in these communities so yeah i'm really pleased to say that with with the certain initiatives that have been happening in the country and all of that it's really brought people together i'm speaking fashion specifically and uh, yeah and i'm i'm happy to say that everyone's quite supportive of each other what kind of role did family play since we're talking about community no a big role a big role. Close, close big with them role. until yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, close with family. Supportive, uh, encouraging. Again, doing many things uh, requires support. Yeah, I'm a mother also, so you need... My, my family and friends played a big role. My, my friends also are like my family, so they played a big role. Mm -hmm. I used to have to travel a lot. Uh short trips here and there, um, events here and there. So yeah, having having the support of the family and, and actually for them to be an encouraging for... Did you carry that into your personal life? The, the, the rejection, the hardships, did it mold you to become a stronger person? I think so. You, you there's an it. element of that and because I'm thinking yeah there's an element of that and the element of one shouldn't take themselves so seriously not everything's personal that's a, that's a really good yeah really good point yeah right? always put yourself in the other person's shoes we worry so much about what people are thinking about us and when we get a little older mm. we realize that there was no point in worrying because mm -hmm. no one was thinking, thinking of you anyway. Anyway, that's right. That's true. <laughs> and people will talk about you anyway. So like yeah. to, to try to own that narrative mm -hmm. or, or oh my God, what are they saying? They're going to talk about yeah. you. They're going to talk about me. But see, you know, I'm going to tell you something. We say that a lot. People are going to talk. People are going to talk. But you know what? And when's the last time you sat and you heard people talking about it? People don't talk about people. <laughs> my father, you know what I mean? Yeah, people are busy. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't see that. When you always hear that rhetoric, cares about what they say and do. You do you. And you get. But really, I don't think people are just sitting there. Mm -hmm. Okay, a piece of news here and there. This happened. This is natural. But sitting there, actually, just spending time. And I had folly, really. It's, uh, yeah. For example, like if someone. You're going to present your brand and someone's going to be like, no, it's not for us this time. Maybe next season. They're not going to go home and talk about it. Can you believe this person came? You know what I mean? Um, it has nothing to do with you. They have targets. They have a budget. They have a shop to buy for. You know what I mean? And I, and I always try to say this to people, younger designers, when they're like, but they didn't really like my stuff and I worked so hard. I'm like, look, there's so many factors in this. It's not just purely, you can't just say, I have a great product. I'm sure everyone's going to like it. They might like it, but when you're selling to a store, this person you're selling to is looking at like a hundred other brands. Yeah. 
She already has criteria she's dealing with. She already has customers, certain customers that she knows who she's buying for. So again, there's a lot of detail put in this. And uh, and it's in, and actually going back when we said community, it's also about education, about educating people on how to, to maneuver through this business. Yeah. Mm. Failures. Mm. When someone asked me, what are my favorite, what is your favorite failure? Mm. Um, I I couldn't quite answer it. I had a lot, mm. um, but de- de- definitely failing in a lot of things that I did in life mm. uh, has kind of made me realize what's not for me. Mm. And uh, I wanted to ask you if you have felt that a perceived failure or a failure has opened the door, like when one door closed, has it opened another door for you that led to success? Such a tough question. Because for me, failure is so black and white. And I don't have one obvious thing. Yeah, no, it's it's tricky. Can we go back to that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> we sure can. All right. Because it's a good question. It's a good question. If you had the opportunity mm. to have a cup of coffee with anyone, dead or alive, Mm. Is there someone that comes to mind for you? Well, in the fashion industry, in the fashion world, it would be Vivian West. Allow me to Google her. Mm. And why Vivian? Because she's such a rebel. Are you? <laughs> At heart, yeah. Oh, God, she is. You know, because most of them, they go, they, they sell to either Gucci Group or LVMH and they just go huge. But she remained independent. Is that how it works? These big yeah, corporate uh, fashion, yeah. they, they'll they swallow up these up and coming and then just... Well, they don't swallow them up, but they, 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 they yeah, buy, buy them buy out. Buy them out and, out. and then their yeah, products and idea yeah. become... Yeah, yeah, buy Chanel, them out. Gucci. And sometimes it works and, and they all work together and they're one big happy family. And sometimes the designers just get pushed aside for creative differences. Wow. Yeah, and they and they keep the names. That's funny. Yeah. I never knew that. Mm. That's how it works in the industry. Mm. Yeah, I mean, although people aspire sometimes to be bought, so it's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, that's, that's, and that's how you get these big, huge mega fashion shows mm-hmm. and these exhibitions, because they're owned by these huge groups. Yeah. And um, most of these brands are making their money off of perfume and lipstick. So, <laughs> are those like some of the most profitable yeah. products yeah, in, the, yeah, in the market? Yeah, high margins. High margins. Yeah, it's ridiculous how much makeup costs yeah, these yeah. days. Glasses. I don't lipstick. know why I know that, but I know that. Yeah, yeah. What I think is also overpriced: mm. bags. Bags. I wonder how much it costs to make a D and G bag that retails for seven, eight, ten thousand dollars. Mm. And you. Not even, you're paying for the marketing, you're paying for the fashion show. Am I right the, yeah, that yeah. Uh, a D&G bag that would go for, mm-hmm. not the crazy, crazy ones, but the mm-hmm. ones that people, mm-hmm. the volume, mm-hmm. six to $10,000 range. The one that retails for anywhere between five to $10,000. Okay. okay, okay, so, okay. so the rapt, the rapt, yeah. يعني السعر عالي حق دي ان جي باك well, how, much is a, how much is a Chanel bag? Isn't Chanel, it? لا, Chanel bag, الحين is different 15,000 reals. Six thousand dollars. Yeah, right. يعني لا الحين يعني it's it's gotten to. Give me a number. Just يعني you're thinking twenty five thousand, thirty thousand reals. reals eh. So we're talking eight thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. And and I wanted to land mm. on that number because mm. I want to come to you with a question. Yeah. How much, in your humble opinion, yeah. and and you're probably the perfect person to yeah. ask this. How much would an eight thousand dollar bag cost total uh, to produce? I mean, I'm sure there's a number that's out there, but I don't think it's anywhere. Yeah, I need Can I guess? Cl- I mean, Let me look, guess. it's in the hundreds. In in the hundreds? Uh, yeah, I mean, Under yeah, 500? Hey, I would think. Under $500. Yeah, I, mean, I read before, but again, this is like maybe 10 years ago. It was like $200. Yeah, I mean. To make. Uh, Gross margin is like 95%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is interesting content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Again, why, these why, are older. Why am I not in again, fashion? again, these are older numbers. Yeah, but you got to get there. Yeah. There's only you one. Gotta get there, eh? yeah, yeah. You got to get there. Eh? 
Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I've never seen anyone shop mm -hmm. like our Chinese brothers and sisters. Mm. When my wife and I were in Australia mm. for our honeymoon, there were a lot of Chinese people there, mm -hmm. Sydney, Melbourne. Mm -hmm. We'd wake up, head to, mm -hmm. we love going out for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So on our way to whatever breakfast house that we're going to, we'd drive through the high street with all the brands. Mm -hmm. And there'd be a queue Lines, of yeah. Chinese mm -hmm. uh, people yeah, outside dedicated. waiting for it to, to open to at open. 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. We're going for pancakes and eggs yeah. and waffles. These guys want to shop De first. Dedicated. Why yeah. is it in China? Like, what is it? Honestly, I don't know. I really don't know. I remember a while back it was the Japanese because the yen, yeah, any verse, because when you'd go to Milan, you'd see so many Japanese mm. people coming and shopping, and uh, yeah, I need the currency. But this whole phenomenon with Chinese, actually, I do not know. It's, it's, it has to do with the economy, obviously. The Arabs, yeah. we, we love to shop. Mm. I think we can give the Chinese a good run for their oh, money, for their like money? per I capita. Think so. I would think so. But yeah, um, yeah I think between Arabs and, and Chinese mm. and, and maybe Russia, Russia as well, three yeah. cultures that yeah. really like their like fashion. The shop. Yeah. Must be said. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. I, I just love like studying consumer behavior mm. and why is it there? Yeah. Like, why is something popular in, in this country and, and not popular there? Um, I studied marketing and, and, mm. and business, so it's something that I tend to flock to. Anything that you have today mm. that you wish or prayed that you would one day have when you were younger? That question is so interesting because I can say everything. Everything. Yeah, everything that I have today would be something that I, when I was a kid I really wanted. Alhamdulillah. 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 Thank you for asking me that question. It's a Thank beautiful you. question. You know I'm why? Never asking a question. Eh? Yeah, you're welcome. Mm. I think it's a beautiful question mm. because I wouldn't ask it to someone who mm. I didn't think was content mm. with themselves because mm. I don't want to make people feel like shit. Mm. But even those who perhaps aren't as content mm. as you are, it it's a question that poses you to be grateful for something that mm. you have achieved mm. today. It it could be something intangible like. Confidence. Mm -hmm. I think for, for me, I, I lacked it growing up. And I, and I wish that I could be a little bit more confident in my mm -hmm. ways. With experience and age, I think that would okay. be my answer. All right. Yeah, now the question is different, okay? Because when you asked me the first time, I was thinking, okay, where I am in my life. I always wanted to live on my own. Amazing. I know. It's such so bad, Danny. Don't, don't put that on me. No, uh, no. We will. Uh, <laughs> Uh, certain things I always wanted to be free to travel as I wanted. Independence. Independence is so yeah. And it, materialistic, I can't remember dreaming of owning anything to be honest. Uh, but the, the independence. That do, you, do you know something. why? Do you know why? I have no idea. It, it's, it's so interesting. Were your parents no, very no, much no, no, like no, helicopter? No, no, not at all. Yeah, not not in any any abnormal way. Average, not at all. Like, average, yeah. average, average. But actually, in some areas, they actually were. A little more flexible than the parents that are, that are around me, and so, so no. But independence was something that I always wanted. But now, if we're going to speak about more characteristics, uh, I want you to ask me this question again because I'm answering out loud. This I want to, um, hit me because no, you said because earlier confidence and stuff like that. I can I by uh, start therapy. How the more more مقابله. I was real. I was a real. I, like I was a really really confident kid. But somewhere in the middle, somewhere, shwaya, something happened. And we just had to like regain it. Look, adulthood, what, what part of your I don't know, adulthood sucks, 20s? man. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That had me in the Just so bad. That is such. Because when you're a kid, you're like a free spirit. And you're just kind of you got these guys, and you're doing it. And then all of a sudden, you have to you have to conform to certain rules. I mean, if, even if it's just like work or society and whatever. And that's when you're like, okay, oh, it turns out I have to do things this way, and I'm not even good at. So you said maybe it was cocky for me to say everything. Oh. But I was saying it in a positive way, actually. I was saying it in Alhamdulillah, I was very يعني, content with with 
with my life now, with my family, with my friends, you know, so there's things that happen in life you know, that we can't perfect, control. Yes, of course. Uh, but, uh, but certain things, yeah, you know, I'm, I get anxious a lot. Mm. Confidence has its highs, sometimes mm. has its lows. So, is it cyclical? I think so. Like a month or two, great, and then it comes like one week. Well, sometimes you wake up grandizer, and one day, yeah, you, some that. days you wake up. That's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's just human nature. Yeah, it's human nature. You can't be happy all the time. Right? You can't be happy all the time. And when we're always yeah, honey, aspiring, I'm, I'm big on like yoga and doing things and stuff like that. But even that's a constant like job. <laughs> What I mean, like you have to be on it. You have to be on it. So to expect that you're always going to be in one tone, I don't think that's uh, realistic. No. Uh, so yeah, but that, Annie, that said, yeah, I would say when you asked that question, it was, I thought it was a good question because I, I love my answer. Because when I thought back, it was like when I was a kid, what, what did I what want? Did you want to say? Yeah, but when you're a kid, you don't think when I grow up, I want to be confident. No. You know what I mean? Because no. you're already. Yeah. That's, uh, I just wanted to drive a car. Yeah. Hey, what do you mean? But you only, you only wanted to drive a car, and then as soon as you could, you did. Mm-hmm. So it's like goal achieved. We're so confident. I, when I was a, mm. maybe 10 years old, mm. I used to, and it might have been a weird dream mm. for me. I used to look, I used to dream about being married with kids. I was mm. really looking forward to having uh, a partner, a wife, and and being a father. When you were young? Like maybe 10 years old. That's so sweet. I'd, I'd look around and I'm like, I, I want that life partner with me. That's really sweet. Yeah. I, I, and I swear I haven't thought of it since I thought of it when I was 10 or 12 years old. Wow. It, kid, it, we just hey, peeled the onion and I just got a layer so now. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. You mm. said that uh, being an adult sucks. <laughs> I have to go back to that. <laughs> Okay, because it comes with responsibilities and you have to deal with bills and you have to be your yeah, yeah. own boss and yeah, you have to yeah. make your decisions. Mm. But uh, I'd hate to take something that you said mm. wasn't good for you and mm. to say that what well, it was good for me. But I found myself a lot happier as an adult than I was as a kid. Oh, wow. But why is that? And And why did... Why am I feeling that you didn't have the same sensation or experience? Wasn't there any beauty in the independence and you being your own boss? No, no, of course. Again, I, I, I love that we spoke earlier. Yeah, independence. This is what this is. I think when I was a kid or when I was younger, that's all that was what I aspired. One day I would be so independent. I remember when we would travel and we'd be in a big city. Uh, and then I would see kids, kind of simple, kids just walking down from their apartment buildings and walking to school in the big city. I'm like, oh, it's so cool. They're so independent. Mm. So that I remember as a childhood memory. Interesting. So, but I think, yeah, it's interesting when you say that because with that comes the free spirit that I am and that I am or I think I am. I don't know. But it's just like, Tied down to dates, tied down to dates who forms who fill this. Man, the life has become so easy, but it's still, it's still, you have to be on top of things, and it doesn't come natural to me. These things, so simple. Yeah. If you just get it done, it's not a big deal. But it's just like how do you keep track of everything? Do you have Mm-hmm. An app that reminds you to do stuff. Actually, I write things down. You write it down. Mm. You're old school. Yeah, I'm old school. I write I things like down. That. Yeah, yeah. Because with all the information that comes to us today, mm. it's just so impossible. Mm. You will, mm. you will forget so many things if mm. you if you don't log yeah. in. Yeah, I, I, write I it cannot down. live a life now without the the Google mm. uh, Calendar. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, like I'm like if I might even start s- scheduling when I need to shower. Um, <laughs> But you know, I want to have every. Best, you know, that's actually really good when they compartmentalize. Yeah. Yeah. I've become better at that. I have like two big compartments because I have my 
uh, my job, which I'm very focused on that where I am, and I associate it to a space. So, so when I'm in the office, it's it's office, it's it's nothing else. Uh, when I'm out of the office, طبعًا it becomes the mix of both. I mean, so that's a bit more challenging for my fashion design side, but uh, I don't say this with such pride. But I'm working all the time, all the I time. I have the feeling that you yeah, are a yeah, workaholic. working all the time, and I'm not saying this to see if if I didn't have, but I, I am, and, it, and it's become part of me. And I don't think it, I could be doing what I'm doing if I'm not working all the time. Would you say that you're married to your work? Wow. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like my free time, but yeah, I would say that it's it's a yeah, it's definitely a, a huge priority in my life. Happy place? Are you asking a happy place? Or I'm is, asking is you if work if work, in, if, if work is when you when you have to do work, and then it's a big it's a big word because it encompasses so many different elements. A, this is this is my happy place. Whatever mm-hmm. I do in this, if mm-hmm. I have to put a if I have to update the website, we're putting a new link. Something as tedious yeah. and boring. I'm excited. See, it's great, but you associate it to a space, yeah? Correct. Yeah. Is your work your happy place? My work is my happy place. Yeah? Yeah. Although it can make me very angry place also, sure. but uh, yeah, I think so. My editor drives me nuts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah and, and how do I come to this conclusion when there's too many days off and I don't have a plan let's say like to go visit family or to to, to travel for whatever reason i i, I kind of don't know what to do with myself mm. i think one of the hardest things of mm. adulthood is mm. trying to structure your time between work play family mm. and to to, to equi distribute it mm. across all three because mm. it's really important not to go and i tend to do it mm. And and then I feel bad. I tend to overspend time working on this. And I'm like, I haven't seen my wife and, and, mm. and, and kid. I only saw them for an hour today. Mm. No, wait, that's a problem. Yeah. I haven't visited my mom in a week. I'm doing too much of this. Mm. So to be, to, to eat quick or compartmentalize mm. how much time to spend on ABC yeah. is a trick in its own, isn't it? It is. And that's a huge challenge I have because... And it also leads to me having difficulty scheduling things sometimes that are that's outside of work, because I'm like, okay, I have a little minute here. I'm gonna go see my friends. I did it, but when they're like, how about in two weeks? Do you want to do this and this? I'm like, I can't answer that, because always work kind of takes over. So I, I'm trying to be better at that. We shouldn't say the word try. Boy, I am going to be better, better at that. Than, yeah. Um, I like I like that you call yourself. Yeah, there. yeah. Just to allocate, yeah. allocate time, rather than just kind of because it's respecting your time, respecting everybody else's time as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Something that's improved your life so much. I love this question. Mm. Something that's improved your life so much that you wish you started it earlier. Being outdoors. Nature, huh? Nature. I think so. Sometimes Mm. I wish I lived in southern Saudi Arabia in the green Mm. mountains of Abha, Mm. where I can just hike all day in high altitude Mm. and cool weather. Jidda, we're a bit deprived of the great outdoors. We have the sea. Yeah, yeah. And when I'm in the beach and my Mm. my feet are in the sand, that grounding. That's it. No, no, but I was just about to bring it up. I was about to bring it up. Yeah, not to sound so whatever, Bessiani. To start your day off. Walking in the sea. Oh my God. And uh, actually, that's yeah, a big part of uh, living, what's living in Dubai has given to me because I'm so close to the sea. And I, I was, and I consciously live there because when you want to be somewhere, you want to benefit from the best things totally. that suits you. And that, that I, I, I boiled it down to is the best thing that suits me. And I have a close friend that lives uh, close by. So, so these two things that, that I love. But yeah, I think so. I think just kind of it's, it's simple things. You're stressed out, go out for a walk. Uh just go sit outside on a bench. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I think I think it's just gay. Being outdoors, getting some air and realizing that's what makes me feel better. If I did that sooner, I think it would 
and I wish I got that uh, habit soon. What kind of relationship do you have with the word holiday or we, vacation? Oh. When was the last time you went on a holiday? Lala, I go on holidays. Best am I ever switched off? No. Not, not today. No, not switched off 100%. No. And honestly, sometimes I say, I wish I could be, but the nature of my work on both aspects is is just not, doesn't be that. So I just try to look at the bright side of things and say, at least I can be traveling and being there. But yeah, I would love to just go to some retreat and switch my phone off for a week and that. Best, uh, I would, f- I, I mean, I, I, first of all, I don't think I could. And I honestly don't even know. I think I would need another week to recover from what I went through that week. <laughs> the bottleneck of work. Uh, 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 mm. Is it because you, you can't not do work on a trip because you're too accessible or because of business needs? I think both. The only thing I have learned to do is to evaluate because... I have a habit of answering immediately, and I'm sure people I work with love that. Uh, but, good habit. Yeah, but now I'm like, if it can wait an hour, and I, and I actually can't answer now, then I'll answer later. You know what I mean? If I can't answer, then obviously I will. But uh, I used to put myself in like not the best situations just because I felt I had to, I had to do this right now. And even the person that requested from me, yeah, they probably didn't read it now, but it just stuck with me so i think just to kind of uh, analyze what is uh, critical i would say mm. and even in my life and yeah, that applies across the board and what can wait a bit this wait a week I say. going back to what you just said about mm. how you know you, mm. you don't take a long time to respond and you like getting things off mm. your mm. I read somewhere recently that mm. spoke to me mm. that if something takes you two minutes to do, mm. just do just it. Do then. it. Do hey, it just do it. Man, yeah. hey, just do it. It's a good habit to get in. Yeah, yeah. Because even now, I'm like, uh, someone's like, let, let me just finish this. So I'll just, I won't have to think about it. And that alone, the, the, the task being accomplished is is a yeah. point. Mm-hmm. The other point is how you feel having accomplished that task. Yeah. So if you to, can do uh, it, do it. Yeah, I don't know. So if there's no need to... Look, I procrastinate in other things for sure. Mm. I have a I have a painting that I've been hang, supposed to hang on my wall. It's been a year. <laughs> it's been a year, but uh, but uh, so <laughs> I love the honesty. Hey, hey, but uh, but when it comes to work, no. I'm, have you I'm, hung it up now or still? No, no, no. Maybe okay. maybe I'll be inspired. Start to do. <laughs> Thing is, it, it is an easy thing to do, it's but we so never get it. It's so easy. It's it's like it takes nothing, but it's we're just, fascinating it, humans, huh? Yeah, fa- yeah, we, we are, are. We are hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And I mention it now, and then when I hang it, I probably won't feel any different either. So it's like <laughs> I don't know. What... <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> I like closing with this question. Mm-hmm. If you can send out a message mm-hmm. on a billboard mm-hmm. to the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, that mm-hmm. they can see for like a minute. Mm-hmm. Mankind can see it for mm-hmm. a minute. Yeah. What would you put on that billboard? So basically the attention of the world for a minute. What would you put on that yeah. hypothetical billboard? It's not all about you. <laughs> no. God damn. That's mm-hmm. not, I, I, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not all about you. Because that ties into so many mm-hmm. things. My biggest issue... Mm-hmm. With humanity is greed. Mm. Me, me, me. Eh? Whether it's driving culture, whether it's corporate greed, whether it's food. Eh? I heard Mm. how much rice Mm. is is wasted in our region. Mm. Something to the tune of two thirds of what is put on the table Mm. is greed. Greed. Mm. I wish we can be a little bit more conscious. Mm. I love my uh, lamb, goat over hey. rice, mendi. Like for me, it's like yeah. my, my my cheat meal. Mm. What I have noticed that these mendi houses have have done is reduced the rice mm. on the plate. But I don't think it's because so much went to waste. I just think just because rice became more expensive. More expensive. Fine, I'll take that. Hey. A bit more expensive. Malish, be hey. more conscious hey. about hey. it. Hey. Well, sometimes it takes that to make people more conscious, <clears throat> though. Totally. 
what I mean? Gas prices went up globally. Yeah, yeah. In so Saudi, people, yeah. they went up. So people actually think before I they think need to go. Yeah, more, yeah. yeah. People Not, actually, yeah, and unfortunately, that that's what had to happen. But uh, uh, it ties yeah. into the environment as well. You're not just aimlessly mm-hmm. driving. Uh, mm-hmm. you're, you're actually driving because you need to get to point mm-hmm. A or B. Yeah. Uh, and, and same thing with with food. So yeah, greed. It's not about mm-hmm. going back to what we said. It's not. It's not about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's about us. It ties into yeah, the planet. Not, yeah, yeah. And you, I suppose you hear the way people speak. <clears> sense <throat> of entitlement sometimes. And it's, it's just I like, hate yeah, entitlement. Yeah. I can see it written on your face mm. in dealing with people mm. like. Throughout your throughout your life, mm. who were all about me, and we're just self uh, self entitled or whatever whatever it's called. I mean, it's good to have confidence. But we all need to kind of just yeah simmer relax. down, relax. Yeah. Hey. What's on the horizon for you, business wise? What are you working on? Projects. Uh, actually, the next year, well, next month, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm hoping to. Um, collaborate more um with the brand uh so working with other brands and uh, seeing what can come of that uh so that's something i want to explore i also actually i'm putting it out there i want to do get involved in something with like it's related to fashion film Mm. like short films ways kind of expressing who we are in our culture through film so, uh, and, and this is all kind of based on my inspiration and my memories and, and where where the essence of my brand comes from. I so, know a director mm-hmm. and I know a film producer. They, uh, two of my friends, yeah. they worked on a short called Maskoon. Okay. David Darg and Lena Malaika. Okay. And Lina, I've heard of Lena. Lena is fashionist. David Yeah, Mark. she's supposed to come on the show soon, fingers crossed. Hey. Dave as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to get him on the show. So they... Did this project um, a mm-hmm. school that was in Red Sea Film Festival last oh, year? Okay. And uh, David has worked on a bunch of pictures, and Lena is now starting her new mm. career as a director. That's great. Uh, maybe a, a Zoom call with them. Yeah, could... it would be great because it's because uh, like I have it in my head, like I know exactly what it is. And about music is a big part of it. Music's a huge part of my life, actually. But yeah, music is going to be part of it. So yeah, it's something I, I've been thinking about for a while, Amazing. and like you know, maybe it's just. Because that Another travels, that, that that that's like it's got a, a a viral element to it when you put yeah, together yeah, a short. Yeah, people uh, mm. were visual, and, mm-hmm. and putting something that putting something like that together can be very indicative mm-hmm. of what you do. Yeah, amazing. Mm. Tab, all the best, Wallah. Thanks for for stopping by. Um, I, uh, I I I don't like my shows to be mm-hmm. just about career. I I like to get to know mm-hmm. the human behind. Mm-hmm. And and maybe you spoke more about yourself, the human, than you anticipated. Oh, my. <laughs> but uh, I got to know you mm. a lot, and and I'm sure those who who watched mm. got to know you mm-hmm. a lot. And um, it's just it's nice to get to know the person yeah. uh, behind the brand. The brand is great. What you do is great. Thank. You. But I like to know your journey, Personal where you got to. Know that. Thank you so much for stopping thank by. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope you had a good time. I had a great time. Thank you so much thank for coming you. on. Much thank appreciated. You. Shukran. Well, thank Just you so me. much. Thanks.